So I've created the data for this, the next thing we're going to look at. And let's, let's put in our fitting into there. We're going to run into a problem. Very first thing, let's get the chart selected. There it is. And design, add chart element, trend line. First thing I want to do was format axes, but I'm doing it in the reverse order this time. Okay, so it, it picks out a linear and it doesn't like power. You'll notice it rejects power, it rejects exponential. It's not linear. Well, it isn't logarithmic. Oops, can't, okay. Okay, can't, can't even do it. Doesn't like logarithmic. They come back. And we want to look at the others before we look at polynomial and moving average. So how do we make sure we can see, well, we can fix the problem with logarithmic for one thing, but also be able to do power and exponential. Here's the deal. It doesn't like zero values. It doesn't like these things. So let's select the chart again. And it tells us all the data that's being used for this plot. Let's get rid of the first one. Now we can right click on the trend line. We don't want to add a new trend line. We just want to change the one we have. So right click on the trend line that exists and format trend line. Now we can check out exponential. Not, not so good. Linear. Not so good. Logarithmic, not so good. Power, ooh, that's looking good. Power, let's, let's take a look at the equations on this. This is the equation for power. And again, I need to make it big and fat so you guys can see it. And it's like John Hancock said when he signed the Declaration of Independence, he wanted to make sure he, George, King George could read it with his, without his glasses. Okay, so we have the y equals some, something times x raised to some power. Let's take the logarithm of both sides of that. So we have, we're going to do it in the reverse order this time. Uh, it doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like it? Draw with touch. I need to do that. I need to select the right thing. So y equals some number a x to the b. When I take the logarithm of both sides, equals logarithm of a plus b logarithm of x. Our data should appear to be a straight line if both the x-axis and the y-axis are on a logarithmic scale. Let's check that out. Now, before computers, back in the old days, people used to have special graph paper. This would be log-log graph paper. And they'd have semi-log x and semi-log y, which would be graph paper in which the x-axis was logarithmic and the y-axis was logarithmic. You can still get that graph paper. You can check out printfreegraphpaper.com and you get that kind of graph paper. And we can see that indeed the points now look like they fall in a straight line. And the regression algorithm just takes, does a linear regression on the logarithm of y and the logarithm of x. That's how it does it for these curvy things that don't fit a straight line. We quote linearize the data. 
by doing a transformation. In this case, taking the logarithm of both the x and y data, and then fitting a straight line to the logarithms. OK, one last. OK, let's take a look at this data now. So we've done exponential, logarithm, and power. We haven't done polynomial yet. The theory of this is that the wind power should equal, this is wind energy graph, the wind power should be proportional to the wind velocity cubed, which is, of course, a polynomial. But it'll mismatch up here. There's no doubt about it. It won't fit up here because the uh, x cubed is just going to go straight up. But this says it goes this way. So what do we do about that? We do something similar what, to what we did with the power last time, that we rejected 0. This time, we're going to reject these data points up here. Uh, let's go ahead and do the trend line fit first, then we'll reject the data points. So let's go back to put in our trend line. Trend line. Good. More trend line options. Now, because it, it do, is just proportional to x cubed without any constants, power also ought to work. We're going to make it polynomial, and we're going to make it order 3. And we can see it kind of tries to do it. Let's, um, we can set intercept, by the way. We can force the intercept to be 0. So that's one thing we want to do, because at no wind, we don't expect any power. We expect exactly 0. So that's fine. Right click on the trend line to get the trend line menu back up. There we go. Now, um, but we still have a problem. I'll go ahead and close the trend line menu, that it deviates. And of course, because it deviates up here, the model isn't going to fit very well down below either. But science tells us it ought to be x cubed. You always want to try to fit according to what science tells you, not what is the quote best fit. If science says it should be a straight line, you want a best fit to a straight line. If science says it should be an exponential, you want a best fit to an exponential. If science says it should be a power, you should do a best fit to a power. If science says it should be a logarithmic, you do a best fit to logarithmic. You don't just start changing models just to see which one fits. That's not a good idea. And polynomial, most of the time, is a really bad idea unless the science really tells us it should be a polynomial in the third order in particular. OK, so how are we going to fix this problem? Select my graph. There it is. My data is up. Now, before, remember, I eliminated the 0, 0 point. Uh, this time I want to keep it, but I want to eliminate the last four points. Ooh, now it's looking a lot more like a polynomial. Um, you can do something up here. Notice we've lost some significant figures. That doesn't sound right. And we're getting some kind of big numbers in x squared. That's why we might want to look at power instead of instead of um, polynomial in this case, because the theory says that these should be 0. They shouldn't be. We shouldn't have any coefficients there. So maybe we should look at power. I mean, yeah, exactly. So this is kind of how you decide what how, how to go about working on a problem. 
Uh, one thing I wanted to show you though is just to make sure that we can I want to format right click on the on the data series box a format trend line label right click on the label the equation format the trend line label now I want some more digits number let's make it a number and let's give it some extra digits um, six digits can I make it scientific maybe scientific is better and two decimal places there we go this gives my coefficients a little better okay so and just for grins I'm gonna go ahead and change this to power but I'm also gonna when I do that I have to get rid of zero zero again and I think that'll conclude this this video after I do that. Yeah, I got to get rid of zero zero first before I even go to power. So click here, get rid of zero zero. Now I can do power. Now power just says ax to the nth, and what is nth? Well, it says n is 2.74. It's not 3. Mm, well, wait a minute. Maybe maybe we do have some more problems with our data points. Let's uh, Some of the higher wind velocities. Why would that be the case? At high velocities. Oh, that's looking a lot better now. That's looking a lot better. So maybe if we went back to polynomial again, we'd be okay again. polynomial there. now the coefficients of x squared and x are are getting kind of small so this is looking a lot more reasonable and science tells us this is what it should be okay at high wind velocities the generator of your power generator max is out there's friction in the uh, turbine wind turbine there's um, feathering of the blades to prevent damage things like that that mean that at higher wind velocities we don't get as we don't follow the a cubed we don't follow the wind velocity cubed model at velocities above about 30 miles an hour to protect the machine or because of friction in the machine or something of that nature which is why um, it doesn't work for high velocities okay let us go ahead and stop this video I'll pick up with the next video